being a, a young focused demo, I think we're on the front lines of seeing what's happening, you know, in the headlines with uh, consumer behaviors changing. And uh, they, you know, they've changed and they're continuing to change. It's, it's not going backwards. So, you know, we talk about with our agency sometimes, the, you know, this term, the cord nevers. It's not about cord cutters anymore, it's about cord ne nevers. So we do really think we're on the front lines of seeing what's happening in the space with, um, you know, the putt declines in our core 18 to 34 demo, the ratings declines, uh, the growth in the digital space. So we have been doing a lot at a very quick pace to uh, just and make sure we're where our consumers are. And that includes obviously um, increased investment in the digital space, particularly in digital video, social, and mobile platforms. Um, however, we, we continue to see that it's not an either or. We're lucky to have um, you know, the budgets that we do. It's never quite enough, but you know, the budgets that we do to be able to look at it as an and, not an or. But we are making um, really concerted efforts to ensure that we're focused on these allocations and changing up the plan more than just when we go into upfront planning for the year. We're meeting, we're getting reporting every week on how our, our TV schedules are performing and we're also getting reporting every week on how our video schedules are reporting and we're comparing. Uh, we're making calls throughout the year on shifts and changes that we need to make as a result of the, the, the massive shifts that are happening and unlike in the past where you know you may, may have laid down your TV dollars once a year and you know if you were lucky you could just let that ride for the year and be made whole by the end of the year we're not seeing that happen anymore and we're seeing the need for constant weekly evaluation on what's going to stay and what's going to move and this annual planning cycle for video is now becoming a weekly quarterly planning cycle to stay ahead of it. We're talking a lot internally about this phrase of fueling the cult of the brand. And you know, while we can all, you know, ourselves, our great agency partners that we work with, you know, we can look and create content around what we think will help us gain market share in the space and really connect with our consumers. We're also looking at how do we fuel the people who really love Taco Bell to be advocates for the brand and fuel that cult of the brand. So do we look at you know, providing them content that they can work and use with and play with? Um, I think an example yesterday, um, I'm not sure if you heard about it, was the Twitter and the taco emoji uh, program we did and developed with Twitter where we were really excited that through a change.org petition that we started, um, but worked on with all our fans, we were able to get a taco emoji added to the new keyboards. And so we worked with Twitter on, well, gosh, what if you know we reward the fans for now they're able to use a taco emoji, but let's give them something fun, you know? And in the Taco Bell brand voice of you know something fun for the fans to uh, celebrate. So we did a, a program where if you tweeted a taco emoji with another emoji, we had about 600 different GIFs created, or GIFs, depending on how you want to pronounce it, but we had about 600 GIFs uh, created that we instantly, through our Taco Bell account, were able to send right back to the user. And then that's something that they could post and share and use throughout to you know, help celebrate you know, celebrate all things tacos, celebrate obviously the brand, our fans, and you know, hopefully as well continue to increase our market share there.